Great. As mentioned, we're delighted to welcome uh, Dr. Cesar Nunez, the director of the UNAIDS office, who is here to brief you on in advance of the inter of World AIDS Day, which is Wednesday, December 1st. Please, doctor. Thank you so much, Stefan, and thank you so much for all of you uh, for being here. I'm, I'm delighted, of course. And this is a, a special remembrance um, for this World AIDS Day. It's 40 years since AIDS was first reported and um, also 25 years since the joint program on AIDS and uh, HIV and AIDS was established um, by the ECOSOC. So um, the news that I bring to you today from this report um, are actually uh, a stark warning that AIDS remains a pandemic and that uh, this report calls for um, bold actions against inequalities, uh, inequalities that are needed to, uh, to end AIDS, stop COVID-19, and prepare for future pandemics. Let me start by providing you with some uh, statistics first. The global HIV AIDS statistics uh, tell us this time around uh, that we have 28.2 million people uh, that actually access antiretroviral therapy as of the 30th of June. That is 73% of all that may need it. At the same time, 37.7 uh, million people globally uh, living with HIV at the end of 2020. I can tell you that um, in this regards, COVID and HIV, in the beginning, we were under the impression that people living with HIV were not going to be affected differently by COVID. That has been uh, proven wrong. Uh, they experience more severe outcome, outcomes and have higher comorbidities from COVID-19 than people not living with HIV. In mid-2021, most people in, with HIV did not have access to COVID-19 vaccines, which is also a challenge. Uh, Sylvian, Sylvian, your microphone is on. Sylvian. Can you mute yourself? Thank you. Sorry, doctor, please go ahead. No, that's all right. As I was saying, uh, in mid-2021, most people in with HIV did not have access to COVID-19 vaccines. Studies from England and South Africa have found that the risk of dying from COVID-19 among people with HIV was double that of uh, the general population. Again, Sub-Saharan Africa is home to two-thirds of people in with HIV. But the COVID-19 vaccines that can protect them are not arriving fast enough. In July 2021, less than 3% of people in Africa had received at least one dose of COVID-19 vaccine. Certainly, and again, on the inequalities issue, COVID-19 lockdowns and other restrictions disrupted HIV testing and in many countries led to steep drops in diagnosis and referrals to HIV treatment. Access to diagnostics, access to therapies, have definitely uh, been in the way. Speaking about the uh, populations affected, uh, I believe that last year uh, we were talking here about 63% of the uh, infections globally uh, belong to key populations. This year is uh, two points about higher, 65% of HIV infections um, uh, globally uh, have to do with uh, uh, sex workers, their clients, gay men, and other men who have sex with men, people who inject drugs, and transgender people. Specifically in Sub-Saharan Africa, 39% uh, of new HIV infections are in key populations. Another stark number has to do with young women, age 15 to 24. 5,000 young women, age 15 to 24, become infected with HIV every week. So um, the transmission has not stopped. And again, the, the challenges uh, that are being faced by the clash of the two pandemics make it even harder. More than one third of women around the world have experienced physical or sexual violence by an intimate partner or sexual violence by a non-partner at some time in their lives. You may have heard in, in other um, gatherings how you and women reported that the lockdowns brought an increase to that um, violence, particularly uh, in their own homes. Then, uh, to conclude the numbers and the statistics, uh, UNAIDS estimates that 29 billion US dollars in constant 2019 United States dollars will be required uh, for AIDS response in low and middle income countries including countries formerly considered to be upper income countries in 2025 
to get on track to end AIDS as a global public health um, threat. Let me go to number two, which is talking a bit about what has happened this year. Uh, many of you are aware that um, by June, we already uh, received uh, uh, an, uh, the adoption of a global AIDS strategy. This is the, the, the strategy that defines the road for the member states uh, with the support of uh, their partners on dealing with HIV and ending it by 2030. Additionally, here in the General Assembly, the 2021 um, political declaration on AIDS was also adopted. And in, in this regard, we very much look forward to uh, implementing the aspirations that are inserted in both the strategy and the political declaration. I believe that we have an effective strategy that leaders agreed this year. Uh, the transformative approach that we need to end AIDS will also protect the world against future pandemics. What are the measures that are needed to tackle inequalities as per, uh, presented in our report? Number one, community-led and people-centered infrastructure. This is something that um, we have seen one and again proven to be effective. Second, equitable, equitable access to medicines, vaccines, and health technologies. Third, human rights to build trust and tackle pandemics. Fourth, elevating essential workers and providing them with the resources and tools they need. And fifth, people-centered data systems that highlight inequalities. Uh, we have reached a fork in the road, and the choice, the choice for leaders to make is between bold action and half measures. The data is clear. It has been too gradual. That is uh, the unaffordable choice. Every minute that passes, uh, we're losing our precious, precious life to AIDS, and we don't have that time. I'd like to conclude, uh, number three, uh, expressing appreciation to the President of the General Assembly, for committing, convening a meeting uh, of the General Assembly to commemorate World AIDS Day. It will happen tomorrow uh, from 3 to 4.30 uh, in the afternoon. And of course, we will be listening to uh, the message from the President of the General Assembly, the President of ECOSOC, UNAIDS Executive Director. And uh, certainly, uh, we emphasize through our report, which you will be able to access online already as after it was launched uh, earlier today. And uh, on the table in the back, you can find uh, fact sheets and a press release uh, with uh, many of the data that I just shared with you. Um, again, our call to end inequalities, end AIDS, and end pandemics. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, Celia? I would like to know how much does it cost to someone who has AIDS and doesn't have uh, an insurance or the means to pay for it? How much is it? That will depend on, on which part of a geography of the world that person lives. Uh, because of the, the, as a result of the activism and, and the response of, of AIDS, uh, the cost that once used to be $10,000 per person per year has come down to $90, $75 per person per year uh, in, in many, many places around the world. The issue is uh, accessibility and, and, and making sure that um, the, the treatments are not interrupted. With COVID, we have seen that, and we've talked a lot about the, the, the chain, the distribution of all these commodities has been uh, stopped or interrupted. So the supply chain also for treatments and for diagnostics uh, it's something that we need to deal with at the present time shouldn't it be free for the people like in africa where they don't even have 50 cents a day to live this is what it costs to governments to to pay for it but in most countries all over the world it is access free there is depending on on, on the latitudes uh, it may cost something or or, or it's part of a, a a health system scheme but uh, it, in most countries, it is accessible uh, for free. Thank you. Ibtisam? Hi, my name is Ibtisam Azim from Al Arabi Al Jadid newspaper. Uh, I have a question about the Middle East uh, and North Africa. Uh, so, the first part of my question, if you could elaborate about that area. Um, uh, challenges you are facing there. Uh, I know it's a huge area, so it's. <laughs> but if you, if there is trends or things you can um, uh, highlights for us. But also, uh, the numbers are relatively uh, uh, low compared to other regions. 
Uh, why is that? Is this because, uh, does this reflect the reality on the ground or is because you have maybe difficulties uh, um, with the statistics or people are more shy to, to, to get tested? Could you uh, say more on that? Thank you. Yes. Perhaps I don't have the, the specific numbers for every region, but what I can tell you is that HIV has been reported all over the world. So the MENA um, member states um, have reported HIV uh, cases. What, uh, what UNAIDS does in this report is that gathers the information that is uh, uh, transmitted to us by, by the member states. We work with civil society in, in um, MENA countries and realize that uh, we, we need to uh, make sure that more data is available, particularly not only at the national level, but at the city level or at the province level. Um, we could, we could uh, put you in touch with uh, colleagues from the MENA region to provide you with more details on the specifics of, of the Arab countries. Thank you. Any more questions? Any questions online? OK. Doctor, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, and we have the spokesperson for the President of General Assembly, Polina, who will brief uh, now.